Sit. Up. Okay guys, well today we did a little barbecue where I normally have a meeting on Thursdays but there's no meeting today just because we got too much stuff going on right now, too many things on the go. So, having some food, training some dogs, doing their thing. Healthy, yep. Okay. Do that another scooch back and make a little... Yep. Chip. So like if he's not paying attention, don't let go of the leash because he yep. might want to bite the microphone. Um, <laughs> he's very he's making a little, <laughs> If he's not looking at the ball, just... Okay. Do that. He'll stare at it and he'll fix himself. He'll roar there. If you always move and only reward movement, he will get super shifty. Okay. You have to just let him settle there in the basic position a little bit. Okay. Sometimes reward that. Otherwise, he's always waiting for your next move. Okay. You don't want to end up like Carson. <laughs> <laughs> now, don't immediately help him with the ball. Hold the ball neutral, like up, like how you would. Flat. Ah, flats. And then only help him with the ball if he needs it. So make the pressure and say boost. Boost. Beautiful. Reward. Chip. That was very good. Hey! Did I say don't let go of that leash? Sorry. Don't let go of that leash. I was going to let my back and forth eyes there. It was just by the mic. Yeah. A little more on the out there. Let him win this time and then let him re-engage. Yeah. If you no, always no. let him win and then make sure out, yeah. winning's not fun. Ah, faster. Chip. Chip. Good boy. Play tough. Let him win a few times and then back to it. Don't drop the leash. Cameras are expensive. Good boy. That's where he is. No. No, not in Canada. Not in Canada. That's free. That's free, buddy. You go to a hospital, they'll take care of you. So, like, when you hold the, when I'm holding the sleeve off to the side like that, he's like, oh, you know, like, so we're gonna we're gonna work that because I know if I put it here it'll bark good but like the problem is you run into Jack and he's standing in the blind like that you run into Yanni Bohm and he's standing in the blind like that like you're fucked you know well you're not fucked but it's not nice you no so we're gonna make it super clear. Good boy. Good. I get ya. This isn't the one with the popper though. Thank so. God. It was just a little love kiss. A little kiss. We, be we believe your dog should go through anything you're going through. You're, you should go through anything your dog's going through. But I want to create the idea that there's shit on the left and there's niceness on the right. No, no, let him. Let him. This isn't the fun side. This is the fun side. Stop cheating. You know we, how we um, teach them to pivot? And the barking, we will do that, but that will remove power. First, I want power in the barking. If we go on to like right away, he has to use his brain in the barking, we're gonna lose power. I mean, like if we went right to what I do with Gage now to get him nice and centered, we're gonna lose power. This is gonna make a little more anger in the blind, and we want that first. <laughs> yeah, man. Oh my goodness. That was good. That was good. I like that one.
we're just doing here is we're uh, playing a little bit with the bark. It's the first time we're kind of bringing the blind into the picture. We want power, but we also want clarity. And it's a fine line. If you make too much clarity about exactly what we want the dog to do, sometimes you lose the power and the blind and the dog has more of a lackadaisical attitude in there. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We want the dog hitting the ground and really like making the earth shake in the blind. So we make a lot of conflict and frustration there for some dogs, especially dogs like that, like the high prey, you know, high frustration type dogs that, that can really benefit from that. And, but the conflict is, is in a very clear context where we have like three zones, um, you know, one for, for, you know, one's the difficult zone, one's the neutral zone, and then one's the prey zone. Um, and, and we're really working there to really just kind of build that dog and make him understand, you know, to be centered, to be barking in the eyes of the helper, but to not be dirty and, um, but to still be bringing full power to that, to that equation. So we're just working on that first time with that dog, um, doing that exercise specifically in the blind and just kind of moving things around, trying different things, figuring things out. And, you know, even simple things like where's the sleeve, right? We like to prepare the dogs for the sleeve to be here, but I saw with him, it was creating some bad muscle memory. So we put it there for now. We'll come back to the sleeve being here later. Once the dog has maybe a better foundation there. Two. Two. Good. So all in all, really good session for Pharaoh. He's doing great and uh, we like training him. Passive activation is very important to real protection work. We can't always act like there's something going on. Sometimes we have to show the dog a more normal picture. No equipment, no build up. We're just talking, we're chilling, everything's friendly. And then all of a sudden the command comes. And we go light them up. Run a bit, Carson. Good. So you can see there, there was a little confusion on the dog's part because we've just started these kind of activations where there's no obvious like decoy, you know, it, it's a, a relaxed environment. We're having casual conversation and just out of nowhere, the command comes. So this dog, of course, will, Theo needs a little more practice with this before we can say that, you know, he's good on the activation. One more and then that'll be it. Oh, no. Foos. Tell him Foos and just heal him. Let go of the harness. Yeah, Foos, and hold the leash. Yes. Good. When you're holding the hardest, that's part of the cue. Okay, light him up. Watch, watch. Yes, watch, watch. Good boy. Watch. Watch, watch. Watch, watch. Yes, good boy. Watch, watch, watch. Good. Take him away now. Hold him. Good boy. Good boy. Good Good. He needed that. He needs more of those. Very good. So this is why we do them. This is why we do them, because if you don't do them, the dogs don't know. And you have to keep dogs sharp, you know, like if you have a protection dog and you want that dog to be able to go any place, anytime, obviously every dog has a little bit of a different outlook. When you have a more social dog who's not so naturally suspicious, generally these are dogs that it's not so easy for them to light up, especially if they're not being kept sharp with regular light ups, showing a lot of different scenarios, right? Because their default is calm, they're relaxed, they're, they're easygoing, whereas dogs that are a little more reactive, a little more insecure, it's easier for them to light up. Like I could probably bring Gage out. I haven't done it in like a year. I could probably light him up on nothing right now, you know, and he would because it's just a different kind of dog. But Theo's a very confident, strong dog. And, um, you know, it's a bit of a different mentality. We'll see. He's never done one before. The time he's on leash is when we do protection. Yeah, there you go. All right. Watch, watch. Watch, watch. Not Oh, you're not getting the kid.
It didn't take too long that time for him. That's enough. You gotta run because like, if you don't run, then like he has to feel like he scared you. Okay guys, so right now what we're gonna be doing is some gunfire desensitization with um, some of our protection dogs and also our police dogs. It's something that we always make a point of doing. Ah! Drop the S. Drop the safety. 